Welcome to Neon Speaks. I'm your host, Neon Devere de Rosa, and my co-host is AJ Dean. Sit back and enjoy the show. Good evening and welcome to Neon Speaks Media Image Show. My name is AJ Dean and I'm your co-host. And it's great, it's my great honor to introduce Ninon Devere de Rosa. Hello, Ninon. Hello, AJ. How are you today? I'm great. I just want to let you know that it's Georgette Dante's birthday today. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to, to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Georgette. Happy birthday to you. This is going to be an amazing woman. This woman's got more guts and more grilling and more everything than you can ever, ever, ever think of. She's, she's a- amazing. And she's our entertainment director, right? Yes, she certainly is. And but she she never stops this woman. Yes. Drinking a tequila at the moment. Though I don't think she really drinks, does she? she no, has- she she's um she's all about work and the and show business. And yeah. speaking of show business, we have a spectacular and magical show tonight, Ninon. We have two great guests. We and sure do. Can I go ahead and admit them? I'm going to go ahead and admit John, John T. Uh, Sheets and John T. Rex. They're coming into the building. Let me just uh, introduce John T. Sheets. And, uh, oops. Okay. Look at this. Okay, hello and welcome. So this is John T. Sheets. I'm thrilled to introduce him. He's a world and international performing magician and illusionist. He has performed at the Magic Castle in Hollywood, Circus Circus, and all over the world. He's got an upcoming Top Secrets Magic Show, uh, which is called um, Top Secret Magic Show, and we want to hear about that. Um, I do want to give a shout out to James Seelan, who's doing all the technical work behind it. Um, and now back to John T. Sheets. He's an inventor. He has worked with David uh, Copperfield, Jeff McBride, consulted for David Blaine, and his clients include McDonald's, uh, Pepsi, Marriott, Budweiser, Pfizer, PBS, Samsonite, and the list goes on and on. He also builds sets and does illusions with huge sets, magical sets, with Mike Michaels for uh, Chris Angel and David Copperfield. So welcome, John. Hello, and how are you? Hello, I'm great. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here. Great, and also thank you. I want to uh, welcome John T. Rex. He's known for the Electric Man show. He is, and also recently he created something called the Fiji Mermaid. We can talk about that a little bit. He is going to be in Georgia Dante's upcoming motion picture, the burlesque film. He comes from Austin, Texas. He is a sideshow performer, and he has worked in the World of Wonders sideshow across the nation and Bed of Nails, and it is my great pleasure to welcome you to Ninon Speaks. Hello, John. Hello there. How are you doing? I'm great, Ninon. Ninon, hi. That was a long introduction. Yeah, it was. Over. We, we, we've done the show. <laughs> hey, John T., um, I love your background. I, I love the simplicity of it. And you are the one that designs sets and everything, right? Yes, uh, props and illusions for some of the most famous magicians in the world. Really? Yeah. What I work with uh, Mike Michaels at his uh, shop. It's called the Robot Garage. And it, they uh, we build world-class illusions. So the top of the line stuff. So do you, you intermingle this with your magic? So I would imagine it's, it's, it's quite exciting with both of them because you're trying to make a magic out of a set because you're trying to make it look as good as possible. And then you've got all your tricks going on. Correct, yes, I do both. Uh, I'm kind of spread out in the industry. I perform and teach, I lecture, and I also build props and illusions. And I do that also for other entertainers around the world. Entertainers, so you must be always very busy. Yes, I am. Oh. I, I try to be. Okay, John. So let's go over to. If you're both John T, isn't that funny? How we've both got the same name. We've all got the same name. Hey, John T Rex. How yeah. are? You? That looks like a circus thing behind you. Yeah, I got this off eBay just because I wanted to cover up a big white wall, but it works nice for Zoom meetings and and various photo things and stuff like that. Well, you did it very well. It looks amazing. So yeah. you into magic as well. Are you both in Vegas? 
I'm, I'm in Las Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. You're in Los Angeles and you're in Vegas. Okay. We're in Austin, Texas. Oh, you're in Austin, Texas. Yes, I am. Hey, AJ, we're getting great communication from out of, from out of state. Well, you're yes, out. isn't that wonderful? I mean, these two magicians are just top class. And um, I think John has a wonderful trick, a couple of them, maybe just one right now to show us. John T. Sheets, would you mind taking it away, John? Yeah, no problem. Here, I have with me a playing card. Watch the playing card. You'll see the magic happen. Ready? Yeah, Here we're we go. A little I way. And you can see it changes just a little bit. Let's try it again. A little wave of the hand. Watch the pitch. You'll see it magically move. There it is. It's just a playing card. The pits have moved, but let's try it again. Just a little way, you'll see the magic. Watch. And it slowly goes oh. back to normal. But let's try it one more time, a little bit slower. Here we go. Watch. Wow. 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 That's cool. And then yeah. the last one, just want to give it a little shake, and it goes across. There it is, a four of diamonds. Now, of course, we can't leave it like this. The casinos don't like that. Well, no, because you'll be in trouble. A little bit of magic. A little bit of magic. And there it goes. Woo! That's really neat. <laughs> John, how long does it take you to actually put a magic trick like that together? Because I, I obviously it's magic. It's done sure. well it varies you know it depends on the effect sometimes it can take weeks or months but sometimes it can take even years so i've got certain uh, props and effects that have literally taken me about a year or two years to develop there's a lot of r d involved uh, props as far as prototyping as well so a lot of work behind the scenes talk about prototyping that must be much easier because of the internet you know obviously for years we've had now but you can get so many ideas and bring so many different things off the internet can you do that and put them Correct. into the the internet can be a, a great form of inspiration for sure uh, the techniques for making and machining things have changed greatly over the years uh, the technology is improved greatly. Uh, in the old days, we were molding things and making two-piece molds and silicone, and, and it was a long process. But nowadays, as you know, we have 3D printing. So that's kind of come into the, the realm of uh, performing and building illusions. And it's amazing. You know what, what amazes me is we still are able to fool the public. I mean, they still look at, and they say, how did that happen? Now they know obviously it's magic. They obviously know it's a trick, but they still don't get it. Isn't that cool? That's amazing. And I love that. You know, the audiences uh, are getting smarter as time goes and us magicians, we have to keep developing and making new things and try to stay one step ahead. One what step ahead. How about you, John T. Rex? You have to definitely be one step ahead of the guy next to you because you've got to get work as well, right? But then you're in Texas, so you really don't have the competition. How's it going in Texas for you with uh, working right now? I have not done much of anything for a year with the COVID and everything, but uh, you know, I've been making it okay. So have you tried to sort of do something on the internet or to, to maintain and keep your audience? How do you manage that? On the inner, I, I've basically just been selling off stuff that I don't want anymore because I'm fixing to move to New Orleans and then I'm going to street per perform. So you can oh, that's, that's cool. Do, do you do anything else other than magic? Well, I mostly did my electric act at a play here in, in town, but it wasn't working out too well on, on video. So I got a couple illusions I can do for you. I recently built a Fiji mermaid. So whichever you'd like to see first. I'd like to, do, I'd like to have, um, oh, which one can I choose? I'm gonna let you choose it because you're gonna do two for me, right? So go two later. So AJ and I can try to see what's going on here. Do whatever, whichever one you'd like to do right now. Okay, well, I'll do this just because it's quick and easy. We're in no hurry for you. No, it's right here. I got this little, little magic box here. Yeah, I used this for just a time waster at the museum I was working at before COVID while the tour guides brought in more people. I got this in Fort Wayne, Indiana when I was down there on vacation. It's a place yeah. there called Stoner's Fun Store. 
Yeah, it's a magic store on Georgia. I know you're watching. Don't get too excited. But anyway, it's owned by a man named Mr. Stoner. And he showed me this little box because I told him I wanted a time waster. You open it up, you put something in it. I like to keep the instructions in there. That way, if I ever find somebody that can read Chinese, they can tell me that's how this box works. <laughs> Mr. Stoner was nice enough to show me how to do a cool trick with it, though. So I bought the box. Take your item, put it in the box, you shut the box, then you tap the box with your magic wand you gotta hold it by the right end i'm not a really good magician nowhere near as the other john t but i try here we go we're gonna go oh, like that and when you open it back up the item has magically disappeared wow bravo <laughs> no isn't that magical john you now have no instructions <laughs> oh my goodness you're right i hope i don't forget how to work it <laughs> you know what? I can make it come back. Yeah, because I told Mr. Stoner I need to be able to do this over and over. You just give it another tap, and when you open it back up, it's back where it came from. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. It just took me, what, about maybe a minute and a half? No, no, no. I mean to learn it and to put it all together. Oh, not very long at all. Okay. So, in other words, do you think I could do something like that? Yes. I could. Okay. All right. I'm not going to. You never know. It's just parlor magic. The trick does all the work. You just need to know how to do it. Now, in Texas, where do you work? Do you, do you work at, because I see the circus background, do you work in circuses and lounges and different places? Where do you work? There was a place called the Museum of the Weird here that had live performances up until the, the lockdown. And I just don't work there. And that's, that's what I've been doing for the last several years. So you've been, but now you've been kind of out of work, right? Yes, ma'am. So what about you, John? John T, well, both John T, John T Sheets, how have you been? I'm sorry? How have you been for your work? Are you still working? Are you still, are you Well, doing obviously the shows aren't what they used to be. And uh, the shows have slowed down tremendously for all of us. And uh, I'm excited to get back to work, excited to start performing again. While the shows are down, that's where I've been creating and building uh, uh, props and illusions for other entertainers. Did you have to get other work, obviously, to keep yourself going, or were you able to sort of continue with your magic? Well, lucky for me, I have the skills to build and create as well, not just perform. So with that, I was able to keep my schedule pretty full and busy. Because so many people out there have not managed that, unfortunately. Uh, what right. about you, John T. Rex? Have you managed, do you have another job, or what do you do? I had been collecting symbols because I played drums and I'd just been basically investing in them. And, and then having played for so many years, I had just all kinds of random stuff laying around. So I've just been selling it off because that was the plan. I was going to sell it off eventually. And when COVID came, it was the time to sell it off. So I've just been kind of taking a vacation. So you've become an antique dealer selling off everything in the magical world. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, John T. Sheets, um, what would you advise for the younger generation to come in and do what you're doing? Because when you started it, it was totally different to how it is now. It, and obviously with the pandemic, it's even totally different. What would you advise for the younger generation that would love to go into magic? Practice, practice, practice. Uh, never give up. Read a lot of magic books and find a mentor. And a great mentor, I might add, is Jeff McBride. He owns the uh, world's famous magic and mystery school in Las Vegas here. And that's also somewhere that I occasionally teach magic as well. You do that as well. Yes. So um, AJ, what do you think of all this? You know, they, unfortunately, they don't have the, the go to the places to perform. Um, what is your idea on that, on the pandemic and you know, trying to get work out there or, you know, trying to keep things going. You gotta make a living, you gotta pay your rent, you got stuff to do. Yes, absolutely. I think that uh, transitioning to virtual reality and virtual TV is the way to go. And I think John and John T. Sheets has another wonderful rope trick uh, that he has that he wanted to share with you. And I'm excited to see that as well. And I think that, um, they're just wonderful professionals and they can they can do the adjustment really, really well to virtual TV. Absolutely. Yes, would you like to see another trick? See this, yes, yeah. I do. All right, I'm gonna stand for this one and I have with me 
and we can still see all of you. Well, you are prepared. You know exactly. Right. What I have with me a piece of rope. Now, under normal circumstances, I'd have you tug on this piece of rope and check it out. Make sure it's absolutely ordinary. It doesn't stretch. It doesn't come apart. There's no magnets or Velcro. So if you watch the, the rope, you'll see the magic happen. Watch the middle. Here we go. I have to use a magic pair of scissors. There they are. So if you take the scissors and you put it into the rope, you can cut the rope just like magic. But if it's magic, you know what that means. That means that we can also put it right back together, right? It is. Wow. Magic. Watch again. We'll do it again. That might have been <laughs> the best time to slow it down. Here it goes. A little scissors. There it is. Watch the rope. See the ends? Watch the ends. A little bit of magic and it goes right back. Awesome. Awesome, John. Bravo. That is so wonderful. I love that. Here, look, check this out. It can actually be pulled the ends off of one end and put right back onto the top. Oh, my. <laughs> a rope without the ends. Have you ever seen that before? Look, check it out. There's no ends now. There's no end to this madness. <laughs> Watch the rope. Here's the ends. Once again, you put the ends back on. You'll see it visually go back together. Come on. There it is, and it goes right back. Oh, wow, isn't that fun? That what it's fun is fun that? Out. I love and it. There it is. The middle goes like this. You can see it go. It separates just like so. There it is. Watch. It goes right back together. And for the last time, we're going to tie the ends together like so. Okay. If you tie them like this, you can see. The knot right there. And we're going to cut the rope. Let's trim it a little bit more. There it is. Watch the knot. A little snap. <laughs> magic. And it goes right back together. Wow. Like that it. is so cool. That is so, that's one of the coolest that I have seen. Did I just absolutely love that, John. Thank you. You are. Thank you. Now, what is your latest? Um, um, I mean, they must bring up on the internet or books or wherever you find jokes, they must bring them up. So when they bring out new jokes, do you, do you try to try them out and see if you can do them and see how hard they are? Do you try yeah. to- magic effects, magic props. Yes, I do try to keep up with the, uh, the new stuff that's coming out. It's uh, very busy. There's always new stuff and uh, it's hard to keep up at times. But yes, I try to keep current with the trends and the new magic and all the new stuff, yeah. Yeah, because I've seen on, on a lot of these television shows, I've seen, you know, they bring out these new things and you think, they're never gonna do that. And how do they do it? They do the most amazing things. And I I mean, I really don't, I, I mean, I don't know how you do that one, but I, I you know, and that's that's a, a, an incredible one because it, it becomes attached, unattached. And you yeah, were- thank right? you. Yeah, that was pure sleight of hand. And my job is to make it look easy to the audience. However, that takes years and years of practice to get that down. But get that, see, it's actually very difficult to do. Yeah, I guess some people might think that magic is really fun and it's easy and you can just do the magic, but that's not so. It takes a long time. Right. Now, some magic is easy. There are uh, beginner magic effects that uh, a beginner, someone new to magic, could purchase and learn. But then there's also the serious stuff, the, the magic that takes years and years of practice, countless hours in the front of the mirror. So yep. uh, yeah, there's a little bit of different magic uh, to fit all skill levels. I didn't know that, that you have to be in front of a mirror sometimes to see how it goes, pretending they're the audience, right? Sure, yeah, just like a, a ballerina or a dancer, they look in the mirror to, to check their pose, their posture, their movements. And uh, for magic, we uh, want to make sure we're not uh, exposing the secret or what we call flashing, which is a, a flash of something that you see momentarily that you shouldn't see. So we're always checking for flashing. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, John Rice? What Did you enjoy that? Do you yes, it was very entertaining. Do you do a trick as well? Do I do a trick? Do you do the rope trick as well, the rope magic? I don't. I only do about two or three things anymore because we, what I did was a grind show where we were moving people in and out as fast as we could. And so I didn't need to know much. I just needed to know how to move people and pick the best things. Okay, so what's your second one? Okay, well, since it was mentioned, I wanna show you something I built here recently. This is a classic sideshow gaff 
called the Fiji Mermaid. Uh, museum shows would have all kinds of weird stuff in them. Okay. Fiji Mermaid is one of the more popular ones. P.T. Barnum found the original in the Philippines back when he was in doing his shows. And, and these were made by fishermen. They used them as good luck charms, be the bottom half of a fish and the top half of a monkey. Okay, we can't find monkeys too easy these days. So I made mine out of a billy bass and a baby doll. And as you can see, it's even animated. Thank you. How long did it take you to build that, John? It took a few days, whoops. I had to wait for paint to dry and, and, and various putties and stuff like that, putting it together. And I think it might be haunted because today it started going off all by itself. That's why I had it in the other room lately, earlier and I had to run get it when you mentioned it. Right. I didn't want it going off during the show. See? I'll just put it back over here and hopefully it'll shut up. Yeah, throw it out of the window now. <laughs> So you seem as if you get a lot of um, a lot of excitement out of what you do, John. Uh, it's very fun. I really enjoy it. It's really all about, isn't it? That's pretty much it. Yeah, I started out just doing it for fun when I lived in New Orleans with a, show, a group called the Know Nothings and the Know Nothing Family Circus, and they were a lot of fun. But then after Hurricane Katrina, I started doing it more professionally. That's where I hooked up with World of Wonders and eventually wound up working at Museum of the Weird. And That's it's been fun. I've liked it. Yeah, it's, it's funny how we always seem to find a way, isn't it? Yes, it is. We always find a way. Now, do you have a wife? No, I don't. You don't have a... John Sheets, do you have a wife? No, I don't. I made her disappear. Good to say. <laughs> <laughs> disappear. <laughs> Nobody wants to... a magic joke. <laughs> <laughs> they're afraid they're going to have... So do either one of... Well, if you don't have a wife, you don't have children, but you still might have... <laughs> I don't know. I won't go down that road. The magical children. <laughs> I have a question, if I may. I want to ask John T. Sheets what it was like to work with Chris Angel, Lance Burton, David Copperfield. I'd love to, uh, if you could you chime in a little bit and add what you... Uh... Uh, for example, David Copperfield, uh, he's a living legacy in entertainment and magic. Uh, it was an extreme honor to get to know him on a personal level and work with him and beside him and for him. And uh, again, it was for the International Magic and Library Museum of the Conjuring Arts. So in there, we have the most rarest pieces of apparatus in the industry all in one location. So the greats in magic, like Houdini and Thurston and Keller and Dante, all of their props, which are now priceless, are all in that museum. Yeah. So it was a great uh, pleasure to see that stuff, to work with it, to touch it, to get to know it. And uh, David is an amazing performer, as you know as well. I remember seeing David uh, growing up on uh, television as I was growing up. And I always watch his TV specials every every year. And I never thought in my wildest dreams I'd one day know him and work with him. So it was a dream come true. Well, David Copperfield, if I remember rightly, he's a, he's a collector of Houdini. He collects, he's spent thousands and thousands just for a small piece of what Houdini had. Yeah. Yeah. He's got millions of dollars tied up in the museum. Hundreds of millions, I believe. No. Yeah, it has to be because he collects it on. He spent, I, I forget the figure, but he, he, he bid up for something and he, he, he wouldn't stop until he got it. And he mm -hmm. obviously ended up with it, but he was able to do that. But his, his admiration and, and his guidance has been through Houdini and, and how he followed him and how he, you know, admired him and everything else. And it's funny, when you go into the depths of magic, how exciting it can be because it is magic, it is fun, it makes people laugh, it makes you happy, you forget all those crazy things out there going on, which is amazing. And that right. what's great right about magic is that people forget about their problems, it brings joy and wonderment, and everybody loves magic. It doesn't matter how old they are, young or old, and there's no language barrier. So it's a great art. It, it, it really, really is, and it's um it's Go ahead, AJ, you're going to say I, something. Thank you so much. I, I'm sorry to interrupt. I did want to ask John T. Rex to do his second uh, second uh, 
trick for us, magical trick. And then we also have about seven minutes left. Just want to let you know on the clock. So let's get another trick going. Um, oh. You don't make me disappear. <laughs> you wouldn't do that. No. Nope. I've got a coloring book for you. Okay. Let me the magic wand too. Here we go. Okay. Now, this is not a regular coloring book, even though it looks like one. You can see coloring book looking. We can flip through the pages. You can see it is chock full of line drawings, all waiting to be colored in by some board kid or whoever. But it's not a regular coloring book. It says right there in the title, magic coloring book, operative word. Yep, we don't need to color it in individually. All that manual labor, what kid has time for that with the internet, right? You just tap it with your magic wand. And when you flip through it again, every single picture has been meticulously colored in, ready to be hung up on mom's refrigerator door. Cool, that's very cool, yes. <laughs> very nice. The color all that, that would take a long time. Let's go back to the sheets. Um, let's get some information from you. Um, how can people reach you? How can, we, how can we help you in any way? Is there anything particular that um, AJ and I can help you with or do for you or suggest? Well, you can check out my website, johntsheets.com. Okay. And uh, I got a couple items over here if you'd like me to talk about them, some of the props that I create in the event. Just a little example. And, uh, you know, there's a whole list of them, but I just brought three of them. These are some of the things that I'm known for in the magic industry. This is called the quantum vendor. Can get the reflection? Yes, I went. Oh, good. Yes, we can and see this. This is the, uh, the item that I uh, because they do some TV special, the diving kit. So, and that's really uh, helped my name in the magic industry. Um, that's one of the, the better things that I'm known for. And then uh, here is the energy vendor. Okay. Another pop that I have created and produced myself and released to the magic market. And then uh, finally, this is just another example. This had a different producer, Cosmo of Real Magic Quarterly. And uh, just another example of some of the things that I invent, create, and teach and offer to other okay. entertainers. Okay, out of these three things, um, you know, how much are they, do they cost? What do they cost? Okay, so the uh, the quantum vendor is two hundred and fifty dollars. The energy vendor is one hundred and fifty dollars, and the cool cash DVD is about thirty bucks, if I remember correctly. Right. Also, you got a nice margin for whoever can afford what. Now, yes, correct. And I've got lecture notes available on my website as well. They're like ten bucks or something like that. So, yeah, yeah. not too expensive. What's your website, John? JohnTSheets.com. That simple. That's it's that simple. Yes, just my name. Oh, and then please check me out on YouTube as well. I have a YouTube channel, and I'm uh, continually posting new videos. And what about Instagram? You on Instagram? I do have an Instagram. It's uh, at John T Sheets. Pretty simple. These John T Sheets guys out there, don't forget audience out there. Go there, and you could sort of learn all. Now with these three things you've got for sale, they can actually learn how to do different tricks and uh, understand what's going on. That's right. There's a video uh, included, and you can watch the video and keep uh, up to speed by following along with me. Awesome. That's amazing. AJ, you wanted to say something. Yes, I just want to mention John T. Sheets also has this wonderful upcoming show, Top Secret Magic Show. Can you tell us a little bit about that, John? Yes, I can't uh, expose too much because I got some of it under wraps, so it will be a surprise when it opens. However, this is a close-up magic experience. It is similar to a theater that is been shrunken down and is right in front of you. So you see close-up magic. You see the theater apparatus like lights and sound and fog, smoke, lasers, all kinds of cool stuff. But now you're seeing it in a close-up setting. And oh. traditionally, close-up magicians don't perform in a theater with all the big lights and smoke and stuff. However, we've combined the best of both worlds. The producer on that show is Elliot Hitchcock. I'd like to say hello to Elliot. And uh, we uh, don't have an opening date yet, but please keep in uh, touch and tune in for that as well. You know what you are, John Sheets. You're a, a mag somebody who wants to do magic. You're their dream. You're their absolute dream because you've got everything together. You've done it. You're doing it, and it's perfect. Let's quickly go over to John Rex. We don't have much time. John Rex, how can anybody reach you to book you and 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 see all your magic? 
find me on Facebook, Electric John T. Rex. And yep, that's pretty easy. I don't have a website or anything these days. I figure Facebook works well enough. Facebook, so, well, that's all you personally have. Well, that's good. If that's enough for you, that's enough for you. You could always go and buy some of John Sheet's stuff. And, yeah, and that's you know, like that idea. There. Tricks. Yeah, I'm <laughs> working on building some more stuff myself. I think it's been kind of inspirational there. Yeah, I, you know, I often wonder how, where the idea comes, you know, originally. I mean, when there is nothing there and then somebody comes along and they invent, you know, a magic trick. I mean, how do they start it? How do they do that? I mean, they've got to have a, an incredible mind to, to be able to sort of put that all together, starting from total scratch without anybody helping them or telling them. Well, a bit like you, John, because that's a little bit what, like what you do. A lot of it, you just reinvent something that's already been done because everything's already been done. You just figure out a new way to do it. A new way to do it. But I was talking about things that haven't been done, things that are totally new. And like some of these uh, television shows, they have these magic tricks and you, you just, you're boggled as to how they've done it and what they've done. Um, I just want to thank everybody out there, all our audience out there. Um, we are now um, on radio, by the way. Our show's gone radio. We're, we're now on, um, I believe we're on Apple Radio. Um, we're on Google Radio. We're on a lot of, uh, who are the other radio stations are we on? Do you remember, AJ? Yes, we're also on Heart Radio. And Heart. isn't that exciting? Oh, very exciting. Very, very exciting. But this is something new for us. This is just, this is in the last two weeks. Um, I have another show called Vegas Live with Nina, and that's up. So because of that show was up, now we're going to put our show up, Nina Speaks, which is another one with AJ and I. And uh, this is all very exciting. So, But I just want to thank our audience, because without you, nothing happens. Just remember that. And that. We don't go anywhere. We don't see anything. Nothing happens. Um, so I'd like to give a shout out to all the magical people out there. Um, don't lose faith. Keep moving forward. Keep learning more tricks. And uh, anything else you'd like to say, AJ? Thank you so much to John T. Sheets and John T. Rex. You've been absolutely fabulous. Thank, Thank you. you for having me. Again, it was a true honor to be here. Thank you for making me part. Yeah, absolutely. It's absolutely amazing. So until next time, we've got another show coming up in uh, next week. You know, we do this show weekly. 